All right. So last time, um, recall last time. What we derived was the following. So we do a if we consider some sort of projection. So we have a vector. So this is uh, this is our S, and without loss of generality, we always assume the zero vector is in S. Okay, and uh, uh, then we project this vector. So this is our x vector, and this we call it x sub k. It's not necessary k iteration. Okay, so uh, I just. Uh, I just want to uh, make it a difference with our x star, um, and this is our projection. So last time we learned the projection is the same thing as. So last time we have the following. So this x k is the projection of x onto this s. So the projection is a minimum. So x, this distance, is the minimum among all possible distances of this x to the points. For for example, this distance is bigger than this one, and this distance is bigger than this one. So this is the smallest, which is y in this s. Okay, and we derived the projection satisfies this condition. That is, uh, uh, x subtract its projection is orthogonal uh, for any v in this S. Okay, and. Today, uh, what we're gonna like briefly show is what happens if we change this norm to Q. Okay, so um, and uh, what happens if we uh, do this type of thing? And now let's uh, continue. So the question we try to ask is. What is this? And we haven't formally defined this norm yet, so uh, let me uh, define right here. So the Q norm is defined as following. Um, the Q norm is defined as the square root of x transpose uh, Q x. And again, we have to require. We have to require that our Q is greater than zero, and uh, Q is symmetric. So we can, I mean, we can safely assume, um, like, uh, in every homework, in our um, proof, and this is satisfied. And now, so instead, um. In, so instead, uh, we derive our um, this formula. Let's consider. Let's go back uh, to the problem we tried to solve um, all the last week was. Um, so we try to solve this question. Okay. And and I want to show uh, you guys one thing. Uh, this problem. Okay. So this problem is essentially the same thing as. So. Looking for the minimizer 
for this problem. And by the way, uh, whoops. Um, by the way, we know that uh, the minimizer is this. So for this problem, we, we have derived either in homework in class, we have derived our minimizer um, is this guy. Essentially, it's a solution to the QX equals B. And so looking for the minimizer for this problem is actually equivalent to another problem. Which problem is looking for the minimum? So let's consider another problem. Not exactly equivalent, but the minimizer is the same minimizer, but the value is a little bit different. So let's consider the following problem. So let me add one half here. with x star equals this. This is, if we look at this, um, if we look at projection, okay. If we look at projection, it's a minimize, it's minimizing the distance. So this is a, this, this is a, distance between uh, X and Y. Uh, it's measured in L2 norm. L, L2 norm essentially a measuring distance. It's like uh, if we take uh, L2 norm of a vector, it's measuring the distance from the tip of this vector to the origin. So the same thing happens here. It's a distance between X and Y. And here is we want to minimize the distance if we compute the projection. Now, here we want what we want to do is we minimize the distance but in q norm and let's let's plug it in um let's say uh what happens so let's try to simplify this function so let's try to simplify this function without uh taking the minimum let's try to simplify this function so by definition this function is one half um, x subtract x star transpose q x subtract x star and uh, we just plug in x star here okay and uh, that will get us x subtract q inverse b transpose transpose so we basically we distribute this transpose uh, to uh, each of the sum and uh, um, and then we multiply with Q and we have X subtract Q inverse B so now um, Let's take a break to compute what is this, okay? Um, because this is essentially, so when we apply the formula of transpose, so we have A, B transpose is B transpose, A transpose. And A and B, each of them can be a vector. So given the dimension matches, then we can use this formula. Now, if we apply this formula, here we'll get this is whoops this is b transpose times q inverse transpose and uh, um, so now we compute now we compute this formula we'll have this is q x subtract so when we multiply q with q inverse we get identity and what we left is The next is we want to simplify, we want to simplify uh, this term. And the key thing is uh, uh, looking for the Q inverse is transpose, okay? But I'm gonna tell you one thing, that this trans this Q inverse transpose is just a Q inverse because uh, it's symmetric. And 
it's very straightforward to prove. So think about this. Um, QQ inverse is identity. We know that Q inverse exists because it's a positive matrix. The minimum eigenvalue is greater than zero and uh, um, we can find its inverse because we have no zero eigenvalue. It means it has no kernel and uh, um, then we're good. Now we take transpose of this, all right? Um, if we take transpose, the right side is still identity. Identity taking transpose is identity, all right? Um, so, and then we apply this formula. Uh, this transpose formula, this implies Q inverse transpose, uh, Q transpose is identity, okay? And if we look at, if we look at this formula, if we look at this formula, so we think, we, we just think this as a matrix, okay? This matrix times Q transpose is identity. Similarly, we can, we can similarly, so similarly, uh, we can show that uh, this is identity as well, okay? So it's because uh, it's Q inverse Q transpose is identity. If we uh, if we apply the formula to this term, we'll get this term. Okay. What this tells us is this matrix is Q transpose is inverse. So this implies Q inverse is transpose is Q transpose is inverse. But Q is symmetric. So this is Q inverse. So which we prove, uh, we have proved that, um, so Q, uh, Q inverse is also symmetric. And so what happens is we just use this fact right here. And let me uh, put uh, a divider here. And so this is uh, one half X transpose B transpose Q inverse Q X subtract B. Right now we just use uh, uh, the quadratic formula, this FOIL. Um, we just do this guy, multiply with this guy first and then plus this guy, multiply with this guy. So let's see what happens. So we have one half X transpose we have this multiply with this and we're in good shape. Um, so, and then we, uh, this guy multiply with this guy. So we have, this is subtract B transpose Q inverse Q. And as we can see, uh, this got canceled. We'll get identity. And next is, so we have a bracket here. Um, and next is X transpose, subtract X transpose times B. And last term is a plus, it's a B transpose Q inverse uh, this B, okay? And end of bracket. So now because this is identity, uh, this term is actually equal to this term. They are all just uh, the inner product or say the dot product of B and X. So this is uh, one half X transpose QX subtract because these two are the same. So uh, we after we take one half, we get, uh, uh, we just get one, we just keep one copy of them. So which is B transpose X. And this is our F of X already. And last term is one half B transpose Q inverse B, uh, B. okay. By the way, this has nothing to do with X. This is a constant. It's not even a vector, it's a constant. So this one is a constant, all right. And this is our F of X. 
So this implies what this implies. F of x equals one half. And now let's look back back at our left side of this equation, which is this guy. So one half. Whoops. X subtract x star q square minus one half b transpose q inverse b. This is a constant. Let me emphasize again. This is a constant. All right. It's like、uh, if we're looking for the minimum. So f one x f two x. If we look. If we are looking for the minimum of this function, the minimum is achieved at the same location with this function because we we just shift the y value. It's it makes no difference because、uh, their gradient, the gradient is the same. If we take gradient, this gradient equals the gradient of this function. So this tells us one thing:、um, looking for the minimum. Uh, okay, so where where was that? Okay, so、um, so the minimum of x, and this is our f of x. Looking for the minimum, so this problem is actually equivalent to looking for the minimum. Of one half. Let me add one half. Okay. So let me erase this. And that's some astounding observation. Um, we we know that. If we want to minimize the distance, its certain projection, this is we minimize a distance. But in in Q, when we have Q, this is we introduce a Q norm. We measure the distance somehow weighted by Q. So now this is also a projection, which means this is also find the Q projection. So actually, it becomes, and actually it becomes, which is、uh, um, which is we define basically、uh, x subtract, so、uh, x star subtract. Sorry, this is、uh, x subtract. Um, okay, let me think about it. Oh, it's it should be x star subtract、uh, projection of uh, uh, s of, of in q. Let me denote this as q、uh, x star. But q norm is the same as the minimum of x r. Okay. Oops. So let me get rid of this one half. And we have this relation. Um. And this is actually our building block. This is our building block for a conjugate gradient method. And also, we know that because、uh, if we think about this. If we think about here, when we compute the normal projection, like the ordinary projection without this q, we want this projection orthogonal to any vector here. And uh,、um, and for here, okay. So、uh, let me still let me let me put this q in the upper. And let me ch still change this to S, and let me change this to S. Okay. So, and now what happens is we compute the Q projection. It will be satisfying the following relation. 
That is a Q projection is orthogonal to V, like for any V in this S. So this part here is our building block for CG. By CG, I mean our conjugate grid. So um, on Monday, uh, next week, we will learn more theory about CG. So today we'll, we'll, we'll first uh, try to see uh, what a CG is, the conjugate gradient is, what the algorithm is like. Okay, so uh, let me let me change my share. So by the way, uh, I will upload a, uh, a more cleaned up version of the notes um, on Canvas. This, uh, let me start a new share. So everyone good? Screen. Thanks. Okay, let me uh, magnify this a bit. Let me magnify it a little bit here. So let me open up my uh, math locator. So, and this is a, this is a conjugate gradient algorithm. The essential building block is, uh, um, is what uh, we have right here. Okay. So, um, so let's read the algorithm first. Um, let me, let me see if I copy down the. Uh, okay, it's uh, it's good. I think it's P or uh, it's P or R here. Let me let me check check my notes whether I copy down it correctly. Okay. Okay. Yes, I copied down incorrectly. Um, and this is our conjugate gradient algorithm. Uh, it looks quite complicated, um, actually, but implementation is not so bad. Essentially, we have to keep track of several things. Uh, we want to minimize this one, uh, which, given a uh, positive matrix Q, and then a uh, right hand side this b okay and x0 is an initial guess this r0 uh, r0 is called a residual so r0 uh, is called a residual which is if r0 is zero it means uh, x sub zero solves this qx equals b so it's already our solution uh, we don't have to do anything like uh, we already have our lottery ticket and uh, we're good, we can stop. So, and the output is approximation to the uh, minimum function and our X star, which is approximation to X star. So, and first we, K is basically our number of iterations. Um, and we keep, we have to keep track of three vectors. Let me uh, explain. So we have to keep track of R we have to keep track of P and we have to keep track of X. So we have three vectors to keep track of. And uh, um, so the while loop here means while the number of iterations, this is while the number of iterations 
sorry this is this should be um this should be and my bad so um change this Um, so while the number of iterations is less than the maximum number of iterations and the residual, this residual is measuring how far away our solution is from the true solution. Because if this is zero, we can stop. So if this is greater than our tolerance, for example, one, uh, 10 to the negative seventh power, and then we do the following iterations. So this is like our step size. But for our step size, um, if we still remember our steepest descent, the steepest descent is computing p instead of r. But here I wanna here I wanna do a remark. That is when when we start our conjugate gradient, the first iteration is exactly the same as uh, steepest descent because this uh, R0 is P0. So in the first iteration, um, our, let's say our, uh, our this uh, um, iteration, the, exactly the same. The CG is exactly the same with steepest descent. And also I want to mention, so this R0 here is nothing but we take gradient of this F and then we take negative gradient. So this R0 is exactly the negative gradient of F evaluated at X0. And then we update X here and then we update R here. And lastly, we update P here. So we have to keep track of these three vectors. And then we set K to be K plus one. So this is CG, the algorithm is not difficult to implement at all. And also I wanna say that, but the theory behind it is quite involved. So on Monday, uh, we'll first take a step back at uh, um, how to prove the Q convergence of, uh, um, of our steepest descent. And then we'll analyze our uh, like uh, CG. Because the C analyze CG is not a, uh, uh, it's not an easy task, so we may spend several lectures doing it. First, I want to illustrate is, uh, um, so this is a lecture five, um, the script from lecture five. So let's run it. Um, and let me change this n to 10. As we can see, this will be a tri-diagonal matrix. And here we have uh, this tri-diagonal matrix. And essentially, so here is we use, uh, here is what we do is we use Jacobi uh, method uh, to get the solution to qx equals, so here is ax equals b. And Jacobi is actually equivalent, so um, to the gradient descent in a sense, um, but it's a faster than vanilla gradient descent, but still quite slow. So let's, uh, um, let's apply it and uh, let's apply this. So to reach the the tolerance, what, how many iterations we need. So here we, let's see K, let's print. And uh, K is 52. Uh, if we increase this to 20 and we run the code again, we'll see that K approximately quadrupled. So here I believe it's 180 or something, I think. Oh, 159. Okay, it's not too bad. 
So it's about uh, three times. Let, let's try a 40. Let's see if, uh, and let's see what's print K. So it's four, okay. So it's approximately three times. I guess there is a log factor involved, but I wanna say uh, what my, my point is, my point is uh, um, for Jacoby applied um, this uh, uh, problem. So here we apply Jacoby to solve qx equals b is essentially we are doing a better gradient descent to find the minimum of uh, our function, which is uh, one half x transpose qx subtract b transpose x. So it, my point is when we increase k, um, when we increase not k, when we increase the size of the matrix, the number of iteration grows significantly. Okay. So now let's copy the code. Let's copy the, uh, the code to our lecture seven. So let's stop this. And we want to implement the conjugate gradient um, to our matrix. So it's quite simple. Um, we just we just do what exactly what exactly uh, the the algorithm tells us to do. So we generate an initial guess. Um, our initial guess can be so, for example. The n here, n here is a dimension. So our initial guess can be uh, can be x equals um, let's say numpy random. Let me magnify this a bit more. So we can use random. Uh, let's use um, let's just generate a random vector. Um, Let's do n, okay. So for example, if we run this line of code, so if we run this line of code here, we'll see that then we print x. We'll see x will be just a, a random number of 10 dimension, a random vector of 10 dimension, okay. So like like something like this. I think it's a random number between zero to one. Um, let me try to use this rand n. So uh, it becomes normal. So it has positive and negative number. And then next is we we compute R. So R is initial guess is R equals, um, so our A at X subtract. And we haven't assumed B yet. So let's just do, let we can, we can actually do b is zero. So let's try to say b is zero vector. So we don't care about b. Then this residual is just uh, uh, is just uh, this guy, okay? And now what happens is we just uh, proceed uh, what this algorithm tells us to do. And then we set the maximum number of iterations. So maximum number of iterations, let's do uh, 10,000 maybe. And then let's start implement the while loop. So while, and we do numpy linear algebra norm of R is greater than the tolerance. Okay. So we haven't set tolerance yet. Let's set tolerance to be uh, let's say um, 10 to the negative fourth power. So we want to compare with um, how fast it converges to our um, Jacobi method. And let's also set K equals zero here. And while this is greater than tau and uh, uh, K is less than, 
the maximum number of iterations. What we want to do is we just perform exactly um, this, what we have here. So before uh, we move on, I want to say a little bit of thing, because I uh, look at, at the Piazza, I think uh, some of us are confused by uh, taking inner product. Actually, um, if we have a vector and we want to take inner product with a, a vector, we can simply do this. So for example, if we have X, right? We can do X add X. It's, it's, it's already a number. So this is computing X dot product with X. And also we can do the following, which is X dot X. It, it's a, it's going to be the same number. So if the dimension matches, okay. If the dimension mat, if the dimension matches, uh, I think this is the safest way to do in a product. Uh, it's either, it's either X add X or X dot. So because X is a variable. So if we do DIRX, we can see uh, all the functions associated with X. And dot is one of them. So for example, here, the dot. So we can we can do X D types and uh, we'll see that uh, X D type is, uh, uh, is NumPy float 64. Um, so now let's compute uh, alpha K. So alpha, oh, come on. Alpha equals basically it's R dot product with R divided by um, P transpose. So if we want to implement this, this is nothing but uh, P at A at P. Okay. So it's, but we haven't, okay. So uh, Visual Studio tells me uh, P is not defined yet. Let's uh, define P. So P in the first iteration, it's R. But later iteration, it may not be. And then we update X. So we update X. Uh, X equals X subtract plus, actually it's plus uh, times uh, P. So the P here again, at the first iteration, it's a negative gradient, which makes it the same with the steepest descent. And then we just uh, we just try, uh, and then we update r. So r equals r subtract alpha um, times q at uh, p. And next is we update p. So p equals. Keep this in mind. P is not uh, uh, p k plus one is not p k here. So uh, be careful. So here is r k plus one. And plus, and uh, uh, we, what we have here is uh, um, is we have uh, R at R. Keep this in mind. R is already R is already updated. So this is R sub k plus one. And if we divide, if we want to divide R k, we have to add a temp. So we add a temp to do R. So this is this is essentially this is R K dot with R K. Okay. So before we overwrite R, uh, we have to do this, and then we divide by temp, and then we multiply with uh, P. Okay. Now we have update P, and uh, we up. Lastly, we update K. So. Uh, we just update k by uh, k plus one, and that's it. So uh, this is our CG. It's uh oh sorry, this Q is undefined. We define our matrix A here. So this is our CG, and uh, let's try to see if it runs and uh, if it runs, how fast it converges. So let's rerun this code, and uh, um. Um, so apparently the code stops, which means it converges to the desired, um, like minimum. So by the way, because we don't have any B, uh, 
the minimum should be zero. So let's try to see if uh, our x is very close to zero. Um, no. Why? Let's see. Um, do we update our x here? Um, let's try here. So. Um, Oh, it's already there, but uh, X is not. Uh, so the residual is already this big. And K is 10 iteration, it converges. Um, so, and later on we'll learn why it converges in 10 iteration, but why uh, X is not the same X here. So let's print X. Um, that's weird. So if B is zero vector, um, X should be uh, zero. Um, and R is already uh, our, R is already our minimum. It converges, but somehow X is not, X is not changing. That's weird. Um, And then we run this line of code again. So let's try to see what is X. Hmm, that's weird. Somehow uh, X is wrong. Okay, but let me in increase the number of N here. So right now it should converge, it should converge in uh, 20 iterations. Let's see what, what is K. Yep, it converges in 20 iterations. So later on we'll learn why for finite matrix, uh, it always converges in 20 iterations. Like, uh, sorry, it always converges in N step. So um, no matter how, no matter how, um, we said, for example, if we said 40, um, the algorithm should converge in 40 iterations. So let's try to print K. Yep. So I, I'll try to figure out the bug, why uh, we don't have X, why, why we don't have X updated here. Um, that's weird. But uh, essentially that's it for today. So essentially we, what we wanna show is CG is scales linearly with respect to our problem size. So it's like, a, that's why we call it a state of art um, because uh, Jacoby, um, so let's see if there is a chat. At the beginning, R should be R equal that. Oh yeah, you're right. Thank you. So let's try this again. I think that's why uh, we got it wrong. So let's try to print X. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Thank you, Peyton. Yeah. Thank you for uh, looking for the bug. So it should be negative. That's right. You're definitely right. Um, all right, so that's good. So we, I don't have to spend time to debug it myself. And uh, um, essentially we can see that and by the way, let's print K again. So K is 40. So CG basically converges like uh, with order N. So it converges, it converges in uh, order N steps. And, uh, um, and Jacoby converges in uh, order approximately n square steps. If we think about this n is like uh, uh, 10,000, then think about this, Jacobi, if it's 10,000, 10,000 is, is like a, a 10 to the negative, I'm sorry, 10 to the fourth power, Jacobi will converge in a square. So if we take square, it's 10 to the eighth power. It's like, a, a, how many, a, like eight, billion, I think. Uh, but uh, the point is, 
Jacoby is uh, is not good. So CG is a method of choice. And next week we'll try to analyze why uh, CG works. So that's it for today. And see you guys next week.